Do you own or rent your home? Sure you do. And I'll bet it can be hard work. You know what's easy? Bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around your home. Go to GEICO.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. It's GEICO easy. Visit GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com. The Ticket. Michigan Insider Podcast is brought to you in part by defense attorney and WTKA legal insider Joe Simon. Find Joe at the MichiganDefenders.com. Make your sweetest day sizzle all week long at Black Rock Bar and Grill with a four-course dinner for two for only $69.99. Choose two entrees from a stunning array of options, including a six-ounce filet or jumbo shrimp, both served on a volcanic stone. You also share one of your favorite appetizers and two soups or salads, and you'll finish your meal with one of Black Rock's classic and amazing desserts. You get it all for only $69.99. Celebrate sweetest day all week long through Sunday at Black Rock Bar and Grill, just south of 94 on State Street. Black Rock has plenty of parking. It's ample and free even on game day. It's time to get to our plays of the game following Michigan's 32-29 win over Nebraska on Saturday night. And this is one of those games where you go through the early part of the game and you kind of think maybe you have some plays the game decided fairly early on. While while these teams were obviously going back and forth early on in the, in the game, back and forth, Nebraska had that first possession. The fourth and two stop. Stuffed by Brad Hawkins, an early favorite to maybe be a defensive play of the game. But, of course, there were a lot of plays that uh, played out in this game, and as the game, as the teams were going back and forth, uh, and going back and forth, you're trying to figure out where these plays of the game were going to come from. They ended up coming from the last part of the game, right? They all came from uh, pretty much the fourth quarter. Uh, just the way the game played itself out, Michigan had the 13 nothing lead at the half. I thought maybe the drive of the game might be the last drive to end the first half when you go 11 plays, 76 yards in a minute, 31. You score a touchdown with nine seconds to go, and you put yourself in a perfect spot going into halftime. But the second half played out very differently, needless to say, as we've discussed uh, discussed in the postgame show, is Nebraska in the second half goes touchdown, punt, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. And throughout that window of time, the Wolverines were unable to respond early, uh, eventually, though, they needed to get on the board. And that's where we get to our uh, drive of the game, which is brought to you by our friends at Brighton Ford. Get on board with Brighton Ford. Michigan faced its first deficit of the season at 22-19. This was late in the third quarter. Michigan gets the ball back with 52 seconds to go, but they trailed for the first time all season. It was back-to-back offensive plays for Nebraska where they scored touchdowns. They had a two-point conversion in there as well, so they put a bunch of points on the board without Michigan getting uh, any points. They had the Cade McNamara interception in the middle there, and the Wolverines needed to get on the board, and they needed to uh, get that offense going once again. And that gets us again, as I said, to our drive of the game. They get the ball with 52 seconds to go at their own 25-yard line, and then they got a lot of Blake Corum in this drive. He goes for seven, he goes for three, he goes for two. And then after an incomplete pass, Cade McNamara finds Eric Hall for a huge completion on third down to uh, turn over the downs and get a first down. And then on first and five, you get three from Haskins and then two from Haskins for another first down. Four yards and a pass to Sain Ristol. Uh, six yards on a run uh, keeper by J.J. McNamara. And now we have first and 10 from the Nebraska 29, and Michigan is looking to cap what is our drive of the game to reclaim the lead early in the fourth quarter. Uh, early in the fourth quarter, they gave the ball to Blake Corum to cap that drive. McNamara is in the backfield with Corum. They give it to Corum. He's around the left end. He's got some room. He breaks it at the 10, the 5. Blake Corum, touchdown Michigan, 29 yards. And they go for, uh, at that point, they kick ish point, I should say. They make it 26-22. It is a four-point lead for the Wolverines with 11-21 to go in the ball game. But Nebraska comes back down the field, and they put their own drive together. So they rally, eight-play drive, 75 yards. They reclaim the lead, 29-26. Now with 7 one to go, Michigan has the ball back at their own 18-yard line, and you've got to make another play again. The offense has to find a way to make a play. They're down in a deficit again. They've only been in that one deficit all year. They'd already come from behind once to take a lead. Now they're down again as 29-26, and but we get to our offensive play of the game, and this is second and three for the Michigan 25-yard line. This huge play puts Michigan in scoring position. Hassan Haskins does just a little bit of everything on this one. McNamara gives it to Haskins. Haskins breaks it. He's at the 40. At midfield, he jumps over a man to the 50s at the 40. The 30 down inside to the 25-yard line. 
Not only does he have power, but what athleticism. He leaps over a defender and goes 20 yards after that. It was a 50-yard total run going from the Michigan 25 to the Nebraska 25. The Wolverines were able to get the ball close to the Nebraska 10, but on 4th and 11, they had to settle for a field goal, tying the game at 29-29. So the offensive, uh, the drive of the game gives you your, uh, gives the lead back. The offensive play of the game sets up the game-tying field goal, and now we get to our defensive play of the game. And as you can imagine, the defensive play of the game was a huge game on the very next possession because Michigan gives the ball back to Nebraska with three minutes to go. But it's a tie game. Nebraska just needs to get, well, we know they had some special teams issues uh, coming into the game. So, you know, they were trying to get down into scoring position and try to put some points on the board. Their first play, they got seven yards. The second play, they got two yards. It's third and one. They just need a first down, move the chains, keep on going. Adrian Martinez does exactly that. He moves the chains but he kept trying to get extra yards, and the defense came up with a huge play for the defensive play of the game. Martinez is going to run it right up the middle, and he's going to work his way for the first down. Wait a minute, the ball's loose! Michigan's got the football! They're at the 20-yard line! The Wolverines stole the ball! Brad Hawkins got the steal of the ball from Martinez, and they've got the ball inside the Nebraska 20 with 145 left to play. And there was a lot of crying from the Nebraska fan base uh, about that play, saying that the you know whistle should have blown, forward progress stopped. No, he was going forward. If he was going backwards, if Michigan had pushed him backwards after a couple yards and he had gotten the first down and they kept trying to strip the ball, then yes, you would have blown the whistle dead and forward progress would have been stopped. But that's not what happened. He kept moving forward. They kept moving the line and he was trying to get more yardage. And Brad Hawkins did a phenomenal job stripping the ball out. Brad uh, Hawkins did a phenomenal job scooping the ball up. And the ball was right around that Nebraska 34-yard line. Gets the ball into better position to Nebraska 18. And that sets up the next field goal for Jake Moody. The fact is, Michigan was not able to punch the ball into the end zone. Uh, They were only able to uh, take some time off the clock, getting it down to 128, and have Nebraska wipe away their timeouts. That's really what Michigan's number one goal is. Want to score points, take the lead. You want to have Nebraska out of timeouts. You'd love to score the touchdown. That's not what happened. Uh, They ended up going with three runs as it was. And so it's fourth and 13 from Michigan 21. Left hash mark, Jake Moody. 39-yard field goal was money as he was all night, giving Michigan the 32-29 lead. And that sets us up now for our gem of the game. The gem of the game brought to you by Lewis Jewelers, your watch store. You can find Lewis Jewelers on Stadium Boulevard in Ann Arbor. You can find them online at lewisjewelers.com. Lewis Jewelers, proud partner of Michigan Athletics and Sports Talk 1050 WTK, the ticket. And the gem was about a couple of plays. Because on the first play of Nebraska's final drive of the game, they got the ball back with 124 to go. And they had a pretty open receiver. Goes 25 yards down the sideline and gets out of bounds. It was a really easy play. Uh, it should not have happened that way. But now it's first and 10 with 118 to go at the 50-yard line. They're not far away from... Tying the game, maybe winning the game. They've got a minute 18 to go 50 yards. So the first play uh, on first and 10, it's a roll right. Michigan has good defense, throw away, incomplete. On second and 10, they send Dax Hill in a blitz. He forces a little bit of a a high pass over the middle, incomplete. And now that gets sets up third down, third and 10 from the 50-yard line. We've got two more plays. If Michigan can make two more plays, this game is going to be over. And that gets us to our gems of the game Third and 10 and fourth and 10. A big play by Jamon Green, a big play overall by the defense, and the Wolverines seal the deal. Here are the gems of the game. Martinez back to throw. Pressure coming. They throw screen right. And what a play. No gain. Jamon Green came up and drills Johnson. Martinez in the gun. He's back to throw. Michigan coming with pressure. They throw the long ball down the sideline. Ball is incomplete. It's over. Michigan Michigan will win the football game. And they win the football game 32-29. This is a, it was in dramatic fashion, right? It was just a, it was an entertaining game. Uh, It was not for the faint of heart. Uh, Did a lot of heart checks uh, after the game (laughs) with family and friends and whatnot. Just want to make sure everybody was okay. It was one of those those kind of games. It was, uh, but it was a highly entertaining football game. Uh, in the end, and the Wolverines find a way to win and pick up a win on the road, 32-29. And one of the things, and Kate McNamara talked about this after the game, and you know maybe I thought he was being fairly polite about how he said it, but I, he wasn't wrong. In, if you think about it, and I talked about this two weeks ago with the or two games ago with the Wisconsin game as well, where Michigan's been in Wisconsin's position. 
and then been that team that's had someone put their foot on their throat and stomp them out. And Michigan did that to Wisconsin. Well, guess what? It's not a whole lot different than what uh, in the game on um, in the game on Saturday we had. You know, you're looking at Michigan being in a position where they've been before, where they've had a lead and then they had let the game slip away, or it's not the game, but the, the lead slip away. And we've seen, and this is not just in recent years. This is the last ten or twelve. This is basically most of my time on the air here, and probably a little bit longer than that. It's not actually a new thing, but it's been. It's very you know, for forthright in the mind is very much in uh, in our thinking, and so it's something that it's in our thought process. And so you're gonna, it's gonna, Michigan fans are gonna have that those thoughts. It's it's just gonna be there. There's not a whole lot we can do about it. It's just the way we're wired. We're gonna have the thoughts of when is the bottom, that kind of thing. When is the bottom gonna drop out? And the fact is that there have been teams in the past that this game would have gotten away from them. Wait, you lost the lead late in the third quarter, and you're now down 29-26. And or excuse me, you're down. Um, it's a little earlier than that in the uh, in the contest. You you find yourself down for the first time as 22-19 when Michigan gets the ball back at their own 25 yard line. Say third and eight from the 37. Kate already has thrown an interception. Now he rebounds and makes that huge throw on third down. But again, if you think of to recent history, third down doesn't get converted. And you punt the ball back, and you give the ball back trailing with, you know, early in the fourth quarter. And then maybe Nebraska scores again and makes it a two-score game. And then can you respond to that? Maybe, but we've seen in recent years, maybe not. But instead, every time Nebraska scored in the four, starting in that fourth quarter, I guess technically late in the third quarter, Michigan got the ball back with 52 seconds to go. Michigan found a way to put points back on the board. Now, you don't want to settle for field goals when you need touchdowns, and there are going to be games later in the season – especially when you think about playing teams that are ranked in the top 10, right? Ohio State and Michigan State and Penn State, right? Those are going to be some games, uh, Penn State in particular, if Sean Clifford is healthy. Uh, but those are going to be some games that you're going to need to not settle for field goals. You're going to have to kick, uh, settle for field goals, you have to score touchdowns, right? So that part you're going to have to continue to get better at. But to me, in a game where you're favored to win by three on the road and in a game where you see things happen to you that in the past would have sent you in a negative direction, but they don't, and you re- rebound, and you respond, and you handle your business, what much more can you ask? So there's still a lot of things to work on, a lot of things to correct, and obviously that's an important part of going from one week to the next. Michigan, again, perfect time for a bye week. You have some injury issues uh, that will need some time to rest up. We'll talk about that. Um, but the timing of the bye week works out really well for Michigan, and they're 6-0. And they took care of business in the most hostile environment they've played at so far this year, which is good preparation for going on the road for some more big games at Michigan State. It's going to be loud at Penn State is going to be loud. So at Nebraska helps you get ready for that. Those uh, scenarios as well. Good win for the Wolverines. We're going to continue to talk about it all morning long as Michigan beats Nebraska 32 29 on Saturday. Plus any time to make Scott Frost a little bit uh, sad or a lot sad. Uh, We enjoy it. We're going to get to our players of the game on the other side of the break coming up here on the Michigan Insider on Sports Talk 1050 WTK The Ticket.